Our second lesson of the day comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8. And I invite you to hear God's fascinating word to us, as we have it here in Luke, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. And they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils in him for a long time, and wore no clothes. Neither did he abide in any house, but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of a man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he would break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many demons were entered into him. And they sought him, that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they sought him. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into the pigs. And so he suffered them. Then went the demons out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were drowned. When they had fed them, when they that had fed them saw what was done, they fled, and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man out of whom the demons were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw and told them by what means he was possessed of the demons, was healed. When the whole multitude of the country of the Gerasenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the demons were departed, besought him, that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your house, and show how great things God has done for you. And he went this his way, and he proclaimed throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done in his life. Friends, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, nothing gets me more excited like a good exorcism on Sunday morning. Here in the scripture, we have a naked madman living in a cemetery who has the super strength enough to break his chains. All right, Lord, you have my attention now. Needless to say, this is one of my all-time favorite gospel stories of liberation, and it's found in both the Gospel of Mark and here in Luke. Everything in this story 
Friends, the Spirit is calling all of us to go to the other side of the lake, so to speak, and beyond with boldness. So what is the significance of going to the other side of the lake? First, Jesus has stayed in the region of Galilee for the first part of his ministry. In doing so, his mission has been focused primarily on the Hebrew people. Going deep into Gentile territory, in the place of the Decapolis, in the city region would signal a huge shift for the ministry of Jesus. Not to forget they didn't head into the market area of time, town, or the city center, but instead they were on the outskirts in a cemetery where herds of pigs were being kept. So they didn't just go to a place that was involved with pagan worship, but to a place that would have made them doubly unclean as faithful Jews, a place of the undead, and a hurting place for swine. Second, the context is important because the Gerasenes had experienced a recent tragedy in their history. Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, records the fate of these garrisons. Vespian came then into Gargano and slew all the youth, the Romans having no mercy on any age whatsoever. And this was done out of their hatred that they bore on the nation, and because of the iniquity they had been guilty of in the affair of Cestius. And Josephus goes on to say, Vespasian soldiers then burned the city and nearby villages to the ground. Remaining survivors were taken into slavery. Severe oppression of the Gerasenes by the Roman forces was amplified after they attempted some rebellion or resistance, which led to their almost complete destruction. The garrisons had their lives and their spirits crushed by the might of the Roman Empire. Thus Jesus takes the disciple to the other side, literally. This place is across the lake. It is unfamiliar, unclean, and filled with unknown. It is a place of great trauma and tragedy. So it is fitting that they are greeted by a garrison man suffering from de demonic oppression named Legion. And a legion in the Roman military was about 5,000 troops. So the name Legion conveys the number and power of the demons that possessed this poor man. Clearly, evil still oppressed the region of the Gerasenes years after they had tried to fight for their very own liberation. If any group outside of the familiar Jewish territory needed healing, it was these Gerasenes. Going to the other side is uncomfortable and disconcerting. The pain and suffering of this area were palatable. The disciples were scared of the storm on their way to this Gentile hell, but they were likely just as afraid of what awaited them there on the other side. Here in the seventh chapter of Luke's Gospel, Jesus has power over the natural forces he shows this by calming the storm as they make their way to the other side. Then Jesus arrives on the other side and engages with evil forces there in Gagano. <coughs> Master over the forces of nature, 
Jesus now demonstrates that he is also master over demonic spirits and what is the equivalent of the force of the Roman Empire. Jesus liberates a tortured Gentile man from evil forces. Jesus liberates the disciples from their fear of the other side. Apparently, friends, Jesus is powerful enough even to liberate us from the oppression that we are suffering from as well. So maybe you have been hurt by the church or someone in the church. Maybe you are feeling oppressed by our current government. Maybe you are suffering from some evil. <coughs> Those who are in pain from these outside forces desperately need the liberation of Jesus. Christ is indeed our liberator. The disciples were also in need of liberation, not so much from those outside forces, but more from inside forces. And I wonder today how many here might be like the disciples who are struggling with their fears of the other side. You know, like those more diverse areas of Irving on the other side of 183. Or the other side of your neighborhood that speaks in different languages and we wonder if they are talking about us when we walk by. Or the other side of Irving that has those different religious backgrounds, including Muslim, Buddhist, and Hindu. Or maybe the other side of the political spectrum, where everything is either ridiculous propaganda or fake news. Daily our prayer, whether spoken or silent, more and more needs to be, Lord, the other side of life is scary. Come. And liberate us. So the good news of Christ, the liberator, is that no matter what, whether we are suffering from outside or inside forces, whether it's physical, mental, or spiritual, in Jesus we are set free. Amen? Amen. Sisters and brothers, are you with me? Jesus invites his followers to the other side so that they too can be liberated. If we are not careful, we will end up bound and shackled, stuck on this side of our anxieties, worries, doubts, and anger. But it's not just fears about our situations and what might be on the other side. We are also oppressed by forces within us that tell us we don't have the right words to save the person we meet who is in need, or the right gifts to help those people. Friends, Jesus is much, much more powerful than our insecurities and our anxieties. In fact, I love the way this story ends. The liberated man is finally free of demons and wanting to become one of those traditional disciples who gets to go and do ministry alongside Jesus. And he does so out of his gratitude for being set free. <coughs> then shockingly and wonderfully, Jesus says, No, you can't follow me. Why in the world would he say that? Doesn't Jesus want people to follow him? He says no, because the liberated woman is already equipped with all that is needed. Which is a story of how he was freed. He had something even better than becoming one of the official disciples. He wanted this man to go out and witness what Christ had done personally for him. And that was enough. In Christ Jesus, we have freedom from oppressions of all kinds, 
We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to go out and do bold outreach and maybe even evangelism. <coughs> God has called us to go to the other side, to show love to those who are different from us. And when we go to the other side to share our stories of liberation, Listen, my friends, every one of us here is in need of liberation, or else we wouldn't be here in this place this very morning. Therefore, people of God, we have been set free for boldness, so let's get to work following the example that Jesus commanded to the demoniac that day. In the cemetery. And this is what he says. I declare to you to go out to others and share how 